Hello again, and uh, today we're going to talk about testing. Is it relevant? Is it worth doing formal testing? Or is it best to just ride your bike and have a look at the data? Or is it best to just ride your bike and not look at the data? I'm inside today for a change. Uh, this is our sort of uh, hangout area for when we run camps and do workshops and that sort of thing. Uh, Claire's got her desk over there and uh, I've got my desk here. Downstairs, so uh, this is sort of where it all happens if you choose to come over and visit us. Anyway, yesterday I was chatting with Karen Dark, who I've coached for many years, as you may or may not know. Um, she's a Paralympic champion currently at hand cycling, and uh, so she's a professional athlete with many years of experience. And we were talking about testing. Obviously, we've done loads of testing over the years. Uh, in the past, uh, we used to do lactate profiling in the lab at British Cycling in Manchester. And uh, we've done 20-minute time trial tests regularly, 30-minute tests. And um, nowadays, we, because uh, data is uh, more sophisticated, data analysis is much more sophisticated, we tend to do a power profile test. So some short sprints, um, minute efforts, five-minute efforts, and then a few days rest, and then... Um, a 20, 30 minute or 40 minute time trial effort where uh, we can then keep the what's known as the power duration curve up to date and if you work with power and use things like training peaks or WKO or Strava then you might be familiar with this curve and it's a great way to estimate your functional threshold power and uh, doing this range of tests is also a great way to get a handle on your performance relative to heart rate, your anaerobic threshold to heart rate, and set all your zones. <clears throat> but um, one thing Karen was saying is that um, when we do these power profile weeks, um, she doesn't always feel like she's got the best performance, like particularly in the shorter efforts that don't come naturally to her. And even in the longer efforts, if she's not feeling it, I mean, it's pretty difficult to do... 30 minute time trial if you're not feeling uh, up for it and to motivate yourself to do it by yourself. But um, if you do a race um, and you don't feel up for it, well, the race is still the race. You've still got to do your best performance or your event comes on a set day. So you have to perform on, on, on a given day uh, because your event lands on, on a given day. So whatever you're training for uh, is going to uh, mean that you need to perform on a certain day. The other way thing I think is that um, the data is the data. So if you don't perform for whatever reason, whether that's because you're feeling tired, you've not had a good night's sleep, or you've got other things playing on your mind, or you've got some sort of other thing coming up, going on physiologically in your system, or you're a bit ill, then this is all useful information and information that we need to know or helps us develop, um, adjust the training plan according to uh, your specific performance on that day. So just because you don't have a great performance every time you do a test, doesn't mean to say it's uh, not a good, a good reason not to do tests. The test is uh, is good information, and um, a, a, what we might call a bad result can be just as useful, if not more useful, than a good result, because uh, a good result usually just means things are going as planned, whereas a not such a good performance might mean that uh, it's time to uh, take a step back and see whether things need to be changed. It might be an indication that you've got a short-term illness, it might be an indication that you've got a bit of fatigue, or, or it might be something more serious, uh, um, as can happen and has happened with uh, athletes that I work with, that uh, noticing that uh, performance relative to perceived exertion has uh, gone down has highlighted things that we needed to be addressed and uh, uh, which could have gone m missing if uh, if we hadn't been doing a testing and kept a handle on performance. So what tests should you do? Well the test you should do is the tests that are most relevant to your training plan. There are lots of standard tests like there's a, if you wanted to do if you work with power and you want to test your FTP you might do a 20 minute time trial uh, with a particular type of warm-up and then take 95% of that average power to give you your functional threshold power. If you're working with heart rate and you want your anaerobic threshold heart rate, you might do a 30 minute test and take the last, the average heart rate for the last 20 minutes um, to give you your anaerobic threshold heart rate. And from that, you can set your training zones. But how relevant are these values to, um, to your event? 
um, the useful to set training zones. But if your training zones are a little bit inaccurate, that doesn't really matter too much. So um, what you want to be doing is think about what's your event. If you're doing, um, if you want to train for a mountain bike marathon, you might want to do a 20 minute hill climb on a fairly good surface um, and see how how your time improves over that climb if you're going to be doing a sort of a hilly mountain bike marathon type event. If you're training for uh, cyclocross for instance then that's an event with very high variability so you want to be able to create good powers over short durations and also have a good aerobic fitness at your, your FTP, your functional threshold power, your performance at your anaerobic threshold heart rate also needs to be good. So you might want to do a time trial over a 30 minute course uh, on a reasonably good surface to get an idea of your performance at that uh, threshold power and also some short sprints uh, you might want to do some hill sprints or some sprints on grass maybe if you um, you could do sprints the length of a football pitch and uh, see how fast you could do to do that you might want to do um, or, or you could do a set of them you might do like 10 sprints with um, with 10 seconds recoveries or 30 seconds recoveries and then see whether you're getting faster of the whole block uh, the whole set and that would be a relevant test to something like uh, cyclocross where there's a lot of variability and you need to repeatedly produce power on a on a on a grassy type surface so think about your event and what you need to do for your event as well as just the need to set some training zones uh, because your training zones if they're a little bit inaccurate that doesn't matter too much if you are training for an ultra endurance event or um, a sportee for a Grand Fondo, then what you're trying to do is improve your power at uh, your aerobic threshold. So, um, and the way you notice that is that your heart rate at a given pace or power will go down. So you might ride, do your usual two hour circuit or your three hour circuit or your six hour circuit or whatever. And your average heart rate will be uh, coming down if you're riding at the same power or if you ride into heart rate, then you'll be doing the, that circuit faster and faster. So what, you're, um, so what you're doing is tracking your performance at relevant um, uh, things that are relevant for your training plan to progress towards your event. So I hope you found this useful and interesting. And if so, then it'd be great if you'd subscribe and uh, that would be really helpful. And um, and click the bell so you get a reminder for the next one and I'll see you in the next video and uh, maybe Fernand will see you as well. Okay, bye.